I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Joe Joyce's home place, not this golf club, but in Kingswood. Yeah. <laughs> not the best of weather out there, Joe. It was, it was really nice. It was sunny, but now it's just had a little light shower. So hopefully it's just a light shower. I think it's stopped now. But I hope so, because you haven't yeah. got a coat. And I you don't need have to a coat, no. Get on your way home and your Segway. Um, this is the first proper interview you've done since your loss to Zhang. I know you did a couple on, on the fight night, um, but the first one where you're going to sit down and hopefully open up about what happened on the night. So I do appreciate your time. Um, mentally, obviously, must have been tough to deal with, Joe, because I know you're a very competitive fighter, athlete, person. So how's life been in the last few weeks? Yeah, life's been good. I've, um, you know, had, had, had like some time... Uh, time to myself and like sharing it with family and friends and and that so it's it's been good but like yeah looking back at the fight it's obviously at the time it was yeah it wasn't a great performance it was a terrible performance for me um I you know I could I, I wasn't really my like like people saying I wasn't really myself I couldn't really as Southport being it like fighting the Southport is such a tricky style that You've, I find, kind of found myself like open for the, for the left hook, I've left um, the straight left, mm -hmm. and um, it's hard to get away from because he was very, he was deceptively, he was very fast and hit hard. So um, and also he's got the wealth of experience from the amateurs and etc. So his ratings, he's a good fighter. Um, I didn't think I gave it my best. I don't think, I think there's certain things in the camp and. You know, you can all like nitpick and and speculate all you want, like post camp, especially after a loss. But like, if I'd won, maybe would I have thought about all these things? So like, it's now like me and my team are, you know, reviewing the the situation that happened, and then obviously where we could improve going forward. We will get into the details about what went wrong on the night and future adjustments you want to make, etc. But you said that you've been okay. That surprised me quite a lot because obviously on the night you were very down, you could clearly see that. But as I said, you're very competitive. Uh, you were so close um, from a world title shot, which is what you worked your whole life for. So has it not been eaten up in your mind, this loss? Yeah, it has been eaten up in my mind, to be honest. Like, but like, it's, it's so annoying, like, especially um, in the pros as well, where like you want to to look after your O and like not be undefeated, undisputed, whatever like that. So it is very annoying. But like I've, I've, you know, come through adversity and I've, I've lost in the amateurs. So I know, you know, I can review my footage and come back stronger. And that's what I, I plan to do. But it's, um, yeah, like being right at the top there and losing my title, uh, w, uh, WBO uh, interim, which was like, you know, right there. But you know, I've, I still have time to, to come back round and get it back and then still be in time for a shot, um, depending on what happens. And, you know, there's other fights as well, depending what, like what happens. You never really know till you know. So it's, um, but there, there's, uh, there's options, there's good options. You apologised on the night to your fans and just in general. Why did you do that? Because I kind of have this image of like, you know, the indestructible juggernaut, whatever, whatever. And, and, you know, I got people to watch my fight and to tune in and that I was going to do it. I was going to, and then like when I don't deliver my promises, that's kind of, that, that's, you know, it, I don't know, it like eats away at me or something. Like it's, I don't, I like to f fulfill my word and, uh, tell the truth and like deliver on a great performance and give people like, I prefer people to walk out there what a great fight yeah he won and whatever but instead it's like oh he got beat like <laughs> he got freaking his eye swelled up I had to stop like it's it's not a kind of like fairy tale ending to to it all but um, you live and you learn and you 
it will take them them hard knocks sometimes to like rebuild and maybe some things could be a blessing be in disguise as well. So let's see what happens from it. Right, let's go back to one of the biggest talking points, I believe, which was your weight. Um, you lost a stone from your previous fight against Joseph Parker. Was that done intentionally and what was the thinking behind it? It wasn't done intentionally. It wasn't, it was kind of like I had a pre-camp for Christmas. I had, um, I stayed disciplined over Christmas and didn't eat too much and uh, it was on my one wheel anyway. So <laughs> I was still getting a bit of fitness and stuff. So when I started camp um, early January, that was like a, I got in there quite early and we did kind of a pre-camp. And it's just like, like heavyweight, you eat what you want and you don't, it's not really, really geared on weight, but, um, you know, there's, there's always improvements and like, you know, I was always, it's better to be, you know, lighter and, you know, to be able to see your abs and stuff like that. So I wanted to get my weight. I'm always conscious about my weight, like not going too heavy and like being like optimal in my, so that I can perform on the night. And um, I was just training, I guess the long training camp and maybe food intake, I could have, but I, I was I was eating. It's just like it wasn't like I wasn't eating. I was eating the same as new as normal. But I don't know. My, my rate just was falling off. And um, uh, but I felt good. I was good in training and sparring and stuff. So, uh, but it just I like I noticed in the fight because Zhang was, you know, he's a bigger, heavier man. So it's hard, harder to like move him around and stuff. But he's um, he was a, he was very fast. And he's a skillful boxer, so ratings to him, he did, you know, did what he had to do. But I think I could do better. Joe, a lot of people speculated about your weight. You'd done that because we know coming into this fight, we knew coming into this fight that Zhang's a big puncher. Yeah. Um, he's heavy and he's a big man. And we thought you might approach it like you did against Daniel Dubois, where you didn't take much punishment at all. Yeah. Again, I, the... I mean, I would, I would have loved to approach it like I did to Bar, and I, I did try to, but the difference, the Bar's not Southpaw, he's orthodox. And so Zhang, being a lot more experienced than Dubois as well, by the way, um, he was, a, and he's a good Southpaw, good counter puncher in Southpaw. He was fast, he was powerful. It, so it was, it was a difficult, it was, it was a hard, <laughs> I, I found out the hard way. And, um, you know, there's inf in improvements and stuff that I can make and I could, I could, I'm sure I can do better, I can beat him the next time because, yeah, it's just, uh, like, even even in that fight, I felt that, because my eye was all right, I was still, um, okay, how many fingers are you holding up? One, two, you said it again, one, two, yeah, I can, see, I can still see, I can still carry on, but, I mean, it also would keep getting swallowed up, but I, at that moment he was was it the fifth round um he was starting to take steps back like when I watched it back he was starting to take steps back and I was working you know the head and body and stuff and as it maybe the second half of the fight it would have been a different story but because of the eye it had to get stopped it wasn't like I got like spanned angled on the floor and had to like you know anything like that it was just the eye that um swelled the eye swelling that you know stopped my vision and then he led to the fight stop it being stopped going into the fight was there a game plan yeah what was it um well uh there was um well that was a well yeah there's there's slight changes to it um as well uh which at the last moment like there was one you know, to stay away from... Uh, it's, it's difficult to say, uh, to approach, like, to tell you the exact game plan because it's quite complicated. It's a, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But, I, and I haven't really thought about it since uh, since the fight, but, like, the game... Yeah, the game plan was to, to win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do... I didn't deliver that, so, like, back to the drawing board. Did the hype around your chin and everyone saying you're indestructible. And I will add, you obviously didn't get dropped in that fight, but you were still sort of walking forward at him when he was landing with the backhand. 
did the hype around your chin and the, the whole juggernaut thing, did that get to you? It it did, but like not in the way that you would imagine, not like it was like jeering me up like, oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in like this. <laughs> Come on, hit me or anything, but it I don't know, I was kind of like more anti that because it's not I'm not just like someone who takes shots and like can keep going forward. I have got other skills and stuff, so it is it's not like one thing that makes me a good boxer or make or doesn't make me a good boxer. It's like a number of things that you know, so it I don't like to be labelled like one thing like that. There were um, I've got more variety. In the second round, notably, he landed a big shot and your leg did buckle a bit, which is very rare to see from yourself in a ring. Yeah. Were you hurt? Uh, pff, I, uh, he hit me with a good, yeah, he hit me with a good shot, yeah. Um, whether I was off balance or not, but that, I felt the power and he's a good, you know, he's got good power, good speed and that. So, it's, you know, ratings to him, he did hit me with a good shot. I recovered, kept kept back at him, recomposed myself and that, but then still get, 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 get copped in the fucking, with the left, left fucking um, straight. <laughs> Your eye was closing, was, you know, badly from early on in the fight. A lot of people feel like, though, had that not been closing, that he was potentially a couple of rounds away from gassing. Did you feel that? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Um, but then, you don't know, like, he, could, he pushed himself all the way f to the end for the Hergovic fight, so he would have been able to do 12 rounds anyway, but maybe, like, the pace and, like, the the volume uh, volume of punches would have decreased, started to decrease, and I would have not. I would have been still on his ass. Um, no homo. <laughs> I think we know what you mean, mate. Oh, it's great. fine. Just to clarify, like, <laughs> no. so you can maybe scratch, scrub that out, and then we can start again. Um, a lot of other elite top heavyweights. Do you think he would have dropped them that night? Yeah, and yeah, I think he showed he showed what he's made of, and really showed that he's like a proper heavyweight that hasn't really given like, been given much opportunity, maybe. Yeah, and he's like kind of late into his career, and then I gave him that opportunity to my detriment, and freaking got <laughs> got my got stopped, didn't I? Like what? But um, yeah, obviously going to come back from that and uh, come in again stronger. Of course, he did dominate the fight, but there was competitive moments. You were definitely having a say in the fight. Um, but ultimately, with that eye, I know you'd have loved to carry on. You didn't quit. Mm, potentially, you were a couple of rounds away from him, him gassing in the fight. And yeah. then you could have taken over. But from a safety point of view, you don't you know, dispute the doctor's decision to pull you out. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Well, well, do you? I know. Maybe you do dispute. Well, I, I, I didn't get the opportunity to stop myself, did I? I, I just got it stopped for me. I can still see. I answered the questions. How many fingers? Two, then one. Like, I could have carried on. But um, I mean, he's doing took, his job, though, isn't he? The doctor. Yeah, yeah, he's doing his job, and um, and yeah, I could have. It could have been worse than it was, and it stopped in time, and then. Uh, so see the rematch clause anyway. So yeah. I'm protected. Uh, yeah, uh, it was clear that you were struggling with the southpaw star went there. How was your preparation in Las Vegas in terms of sparring southpaws, etc.? Yeah, preparation was good. Sparring southpaws, I had uh, like a number of different ones I had, and also back here, I had the last um, week of sparring, and um, yeah, just oh, I don't know, like the. the Like you can, you can nit nitpick like my performance and my participation in the camp. You can nitpick with uh, my coaches and my team, is like you know what went wrong there, and, and <clears throat> that's what we had a conversation with um, Adam and Shane uh, the other day about all these things, and you know hopefully we're going to rectify them and obviously going forward and make the improvements where needed and stuff. So like next time round, we can. Um, not then, not make the same mistakes and come in bigger and stronger and and harder and faster. Hopefully, I'm sure the uh, Joe Joyce fans out there 
hope that is the case. There were lots of other names being linked with yourself on Fight Week from channels like us, from BT, from your promoters, Queensbury, uh, Tyson Fury, Alexander Rusik, Anthony Joshua. Were the, quest were the names being brought up to you rather than Zhilai Zhang, even though you were fighting him on that Saturday? I'm not trying to get you to make excuses, but mentally, did that have a, an effect on you or not? No, because I... I don't underestimate my opponents. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I, I guess there's all, all like, it's all talk about the other fights and and everything like that. So, I mean, it could have been a, a little bit of a distraction, but like, you know, I, had, I did have, I'm experienced and I know what I, what I know what I got to do. But it's just, it just wasn't. It was wasn't my night. It was a bad day at the office, and I got beat so I mean I, I just need to improve and come back stronger yeah of course now uh, Eddie Hearn is a, a rival promote, promoter of course yeah um, I'm he, sure he, uh, I saw him digging me out straight away so he's got the <laughs> opportunity I should retire people telling me I should retire like I've only got a bruised eye it's all recovered now and oh, I don't know I'm, well yeah I, I was going to bring up his comments that he made to our channel um it's all in good fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's all jovial. I think a couple of points that were really picked up upon were, firstly, he said he doesn't like the way you spoke about Anthony Joshua in mm. that fight weekend previously. And also, he was very um, insistent that Zhilai Zhang's not an elite heavyweight that you lost to. On all that right, one. well, how about Zhang fight Joshua and see what happens? <laughs> you believe Zhang beats Joshua? Possibly. But yeah, who thought, knows? Thought, but, the, but great for Zang because now he's being talked about fighting all these guys. So, you know what I mean? But well, yeah, he can talk about other guys and. Uh, but, but what was uh, specifically was he was I disrespectful about Joshua? What was he saying he didn't mention anything specific? He just said he doesn't like the way you spoke about him. All right. Well, at least I'm speaking about him because. Uh, well, I guess, I guess they're they're. they're it's kind of speaking about me now. Like I'm kind of been mentioned in the top five, whatever heavyweights. Like yeah, you have to be in the conversation yeah. now. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not what you wanted on the night, but in a weird way, I feel like your profile and stock has risen a little bit. Mm -hmm. In a strange way, coming off a loss. Yeah. Because it was a big fight, and now going into this rematch, which we're going to get on to. Yeah, it's good. yeah, the rematch is always bigger. So it's huge. It's absolutely mm. huge, and you've invoked your contractual right. Um, to an immediate rematch with, with Zhang. What was the decision process in the last couple of weeks? I'm sure other options were contemplated. So how did you ultimately get to that decision about invoking your rights to a rematch with him? Well, I am entitled to my rights for a rematch because I noticed soon after the fight, everyone's like calling out Zhang now. It's like, wait, well, hang on a minute, I've got a rematch clause. So I'm just making sure that everyone knows that. And I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm ready. To, well, I'm ready to uh, right the the wrongs. Right the wrongs. Yeah. It was a big talking point in the sport, though. What is Joe Joyce going to do? Because from your perspective, a fighter's point of view, all you want to do, I'm sure, not on a personal level, because there doesn't seem to be any personal needle between you and Zhang. From a sporting point of view, is to right that wrong, as he said, and and get the win back and get your WBO interim mandatory position back. But then, yeah, before the mandatories get called. Like, exactly, is. which will be the last one, the WBO. So it doesn't really mm. affect things in that way. But the other thought process is maybe, you know, look, it was a, a dominant win from Zhang overall, if we're being honest. You said you had a bad night at the office, which is clear to see. But that this is a huge risk, because if you do go in there and lose again, that could be it career-wise, Joe. So it's a big decision to make, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well... Is it? No. I'm not thinking about... It, but yeah, I mean, boxing is a risky sport. And... Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know. I'll, it ta it, I will say it takes a lot of courage, though, to go back in straight into a, a rematch after you've just been stopped by someone. That says a lot about your character, would you say? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Um, yeah, because I'm hard and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the rematch isn't like 
Yeah. I guess what I'm getting at was it was it an easy decision for you to make about invoking that straight away. Uh, yeah, it's an easy decision to make. Yeah, because uh, I'm entitled to my rematch clause. It's in writing, so while everyone's, uh, I don't know, um, like willing to challenge him and whatever else, <clears throat> you just make it making sure everyone knows that I'm going to rematch him. Mm. Within that rematch clause, though, um, I spoke to your manager, Adam Morley, and he did tell me that um, you can both have potentially interim fights, so you've got an option contractually on Jang um, in your next two fights. So yeah, you, yeah. he could have a fight, you could have a fight, and then you could still invoke that rematch on him. Contractually, that's your right still. But there's a risk in that if Zhang loses his fight, then they'll have to fight the person who he lost to. And, yeah. and you've got no contractual right for that. You've mm. only got a contractual right on the <coughs> yeah, individual. So that's, so that's a risk. But then if you're not willing to take risk, then maybe you won't achieve anything in, in boxing. I think that's a, the, the, uh, the quote. So, so, so essentially from the WBO mandatory world title shot position, it's better for you to go in straight away with him and just get that belt back. Yeah. In time for the for the rematch. Yeah, because yeah. I mean not the rematch. In time for the um, <laughs> Usyk mandatory. Talking about yeah, yeah. The, the shot, yeah. The yeah, the shot. WBO shot. Because yeah, for people who just might not understand that point, what we're saying is is that you could have a fight and then fight Zhang. You still that's your right. But if Zhang had an interim fight, which he can, and he gets beat for that WBO interim belt, your rights are only over Zhang the individual and not the belt. So. X fighter could have the WBO so re rematch Zhang for no belt. Exactly, there's no yeah, point, yeah, is there? Really, saying, yeah. from a business career point of view, it doesn't really make much sense. And then the other guy's got the the WBO position, and you can't, you've got no rights over it. Well, I mean, I, I don't have to take a rematch. I could fight the person who. Well, I mean, you could fight technically the person who's beat Zhang, but he, he doesn't have to fight you because you got no, he, you haven't got rights over him. You've only got rights over Zhang. So no, that, but he, yeah, but I got rights over him. He hasn't got rights over me. Who's that? Zhang. No, but what I'm saying is if Zhang was to have an interim fight and lose the fight, yeah. then that belt obviously has gone to someone else. Yeah. And then... So then there'd be no need fighting Zhang and fight the other dude for it. No? But but you don't have a an option on that guy. That's the point that Adam was making to me. Oh, right. You yeah, only have an option on the yeah, individual yeah, yeah, yeah. as in yeah, Zhang. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. I guess we're going to see this rematch in the summer, Joe. You and him, straight away. Is that the plan? Bush. <laughs> So I know a date hasn't been announced formally, etc. But from what we're hearing, summer, late autumn. So I'm guessing you want to get out to Vegas in the next couple of weeks, maybe month. Yeah, in the next month. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably yeah. Before uh, early, uh, late, late, May, late May, early June, maybe something like that. Right. Okay. Be good to to get back training and improving and. Um, coming up with a new game plan and correcting the mistakes that I made and et cetera. Well, yeah, I'm guessing there's going to be a, a different approach. Let me ask you about um, your S&C department because weight was a, a big factor. Are you going to consciously uh, make a decision to put weight back on for this rematch? And are you going to be still working with Larry Wade? Um, yeah, I think I'll... You know, I'll be working still with Larry Wade, but we need to make some changes and uh, to the program and uh, a little bit. But the, my diet, I haven't really been, I haven't really changed much like from last time. So I, I thought I was eating well and stuff. It's just maybe the pre-camp and over Christmas, I didn't load up again. And it was a long camp that maybe had like a a reason, but like it was always that I was overweight. Like for, for, for Parker, really, I was overweight. I was over my um, optimal weight. And um, but is that why you were able, perhaps, to absorb those massive shots that Parker, Takam, Christian Hammer even were landing? Yeah, but I absorbed those those shots in the in the Zhang fight as well. But like the difference is, I had like the lighter weight, but then. 
my footwork and my jab and stuff wasn't effective in that fight. So, you know, they're the things that I, I guess I need to address. Or Yeah, when you came into the ring, as, as I said, that looked like the best shape I've seen you in terms of you could see your abs and... Yeah, so if I'd beat Zhang not comfortably, <laughs> then people would be worried about my weight and stuff. But it's like, that's what I'm saying, people nitpicking, like, because I've lost and it's like, oh, what went wrong? Like, oh, it was that. No, it was that. So, like, you need... To, like it's maybe there's a number of them things and um, just need to get things like more streamlined and but did you feel I we- myself need to uh, be better as well did you feel weaker in the ring uh, yeah I didn't yeah I didn't feel yeah like the weight and yeah I guess yeah I didn't feel I didn't feel particularly strong like because um, I didn't see any clear well, I mean he started to take a da- uh, backward steps and stuff in the as as the fight went on um but yeah he was he was g'd up because he was he kept on landing at will at my eye swelling up clearly swelling up so it was um you know as as to his confidence as well is head movement mobility something that's going to be a key part of uh, your camp and preparation and ahead of this rematch yeah, I think more defence can't can't hurt, can it? I mean, <laughs> it won't hurt me as much like if I can block for a change or get my head out of the way. But it's it's tricky when you're fighting the southpaw because I like my last cut, like you know, big fights have been like against orthodox fighters, so it's a completely different style. He's tall, he's strong, he's fast, he's experienced, so it's pre- you know. Uh, perhaps a risk too far, but like it's one that I want to write and uh, you know keep moving on. And I, I'm still still want to become world champion, heavyweight champion. Yeah, of course. What's um, your trainer Ishmael Salah said about the loss? Have you spoke to him much about it? I um, this is difficult difficult with the time difference. I did try and speak to him at one stage and. Uh, but it was so late. It was like <laughs> it's like twelve one o'clock. I'm like, <laughs> I can't. I need to bring him back. <laughs> like, uh, Joe, let me ask you about um, a couple of other topics just before we close off. There was a recent suggestion that um, Fury might seek out a WBC world title defense against Zhang. Now, this is before you invoke your rematch clause. Um, there is still the possibility that if Fury really wants that fight against Zhang. Um, this summer that they could pay you and your team step aside money and he could fight Zhang is that something I know it's more for Adam morally and and as in your manager Adam and your promoter Frank but is that something you'd entertain or not really Uh, it will depend depends what the numbers is depends depends how much (laughs) Yeah, of course. I mean, if they chuck some ludicrous sum at you, then you'd have to think about it. But Definitely think about it, yeah. But, but is your main goal and the intention in your head to just get back in with Zhang and beat him? Yeah, I want, I want to beat him, yeah. Get back in there and beat him. That's, uh, that's why I've reenacted, uh, reactivated the rematch course. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, this is more for your team, but... Have you heard anything about potential offers from Macau, China, uh, a massive site fee potentially to stage a rematch? No, I haven't heard anything, but that would be interesting, like because you know, there's, obviously China has a big population, so it depends what uh, you know the rematch could be bigger over there. Then you know that that'd be interesting to see what kind of figures they come up with. Yeah, Macau is the uh, Chinese version of Las Vegas, so. Oh really. If they've, I'm sure they've got the dollars. It's just whether they want to put it up, I guess. But that could be an option. But still, I mean, this fight was at um, the Copper Box. I think this rematch now is it's an O2 fight. I think it's a, it's a it's a massive fight. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And um, again, it's not what you wanted on the night, but as you said multiple times in this interview, and I think it's an important point that. From a world title point of view, WBO shot point of view, nothing actually changed or was affected because if you do if you do beat Zhang in a rematch this summer, yeah, it doesn't change anything because I'm back where I started. Exactly. 
We're just a few fights in. Yeah. So it's not all disaster, Joe. It's not all disaster, no. There's still there's still hope for me, yeah. And it will be revenge when you rematch Jank? That's that's the plan. But I don't like to use re revenge. I just like to, to beat his ass. <laughs> I, I don't mean, as I said, uh, there's no uh, personal animosity really between you and Jank. So I get where you're coming from. From a, a sporting element. Yeah. Yeah, sure, I'd like you, to get... You want it back. Yeah, yeah, I want it back. Yeah, I want yeah. to get it. You believe potentially as well, um, if you make the right adjustments, you can stop Zhilai Zhang? Yeah, I thought in, even in the first fight, barring the eye closing up, I thought... Um, I was in. I was still in there. I was in there, and I could have. I think in the later rounds, I kept pushing it. He started to kind of take wither a bit and take backward steps. I mean, he would have still been with me to to the twelfth round, like like he showed in the Hergovic fight. But um, I believe I'd have started to to um, to get ahead of him. It's just yeah, it's unfortunate. He, he's very good, man. It wasn't unfortunate. He was very good, and he he was a better man on the night. Well, we shall see who will be the better man on the night when this rematch happens. Um, listen, Joe Joyce, really do appreciate your time because I know this is the first one you've done uh, since that night. Um, yeah, back thank, last thank month. you as well for coming all the way up here. And well, it's only 20 minutes away from oh, right, okay, right. Kingswood. I'll take that back. I would have, have travelled no, across the country. It's all right, <laughs> it's all right Joe. <laughs> to be fair, I, in your camp, I took a 10-hour flight to Las Vegas to come and see you. Oh, so. Yeah. Oh, that's not a bad uh, location. <laughs> no, it isn't a bad location. <laughs> <laughs> if it was 10 hours to Kingswood, I might have uh, swerved it. No, listen, do appreciate your time. Thank you very much and uh, we'll speak soon, Joe. All right. Thanks very much. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up at it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.